Number 1. Up in the Sky We open on the surface of the doomed planet Krypton 35 years ago. It is under attack. Glistening, metallic, humanoid drones roam the streets, striking down any and all they see before them. An army of these strange, glowing killer robots stalks the populace eerily. In the sky above the city, a giant floating space station, sculpted into the image of its creator, hangs silently in the air. Staring impassionately down on the masses, it now slaughters. Eventually, the drones look up at their mothership. Their eyes glow a sick green. A field erupts from out of the Earth itself, locking the city in a cage of impenetrable light. Until, all of a sudden, it's gone. An entire city wiped off the planet. This was how the city of Kandor fell. And it wouldn't be the last. Back on Earth in the present day, Metropolis's most beloved married couple is struggling to get through another staff meeting at the Daily Planet. For co-workers and partners Clark Kent and Lois Lane, this is just another day at the office, complete with fellow reporters Jimmy Olsen and a colorful cast of new editorial hires. Catherine Grant, the planet's flirtatious new tabloid reporter, was going out of her way to make a memorable impression on Clark in any way she could. Grant even approached Clark's desk specifically, looking to seduce the impressionable small-town reporter by showing some skin. But while Catherine was going nowhere fast with Clark, the paper's new chief of sports was having even less luck wooing Lois. Meathead sports reporter Steve Lombard wasn't only realizing how tough the famous Lois Lane was, he was beginning to learn why you shouldn't make ignorant passes at Superman's wife in the workplace. When you do, you just might find office chairs suddenly melting beneath your feet. But before the day could settle into its comfortable routine, a satellite in upper orbit was suddenly obliterated by something Earthbound. Clark hears the alert as it goes off and jumps into action. After locating the object, Superman sped towards it and intercepted the mysterious danger. But instead of rocky space dirt, he felt cold, unyielding steel. Upon collision, the bogey hummed to life and unfurled itself into a creature of unmistakable origin. Brainiac, Superman recognizes instantly. What do you want this time? No response from the drone. Instead, it unfurls its fist and sends a probing tentacle out, trying to bury itself into Superman's brain. Instead, the protrusion bounces clear off of Clark's skin, leaving only a small dot in its wake. Ow, Superman says, frowning at the machine. After being struck a second time, Superman managed to grab the robot's tendril and arm. Smashing it to bits, Superman decided to take their fight to the ground, crashing into a nearby forest. Using a force field, the drone would charge forward while repelling Superman's heat vision. But as it scanned the Kryptonian, something strange happened. After a blood analysis, it shut down. The drone collapsed into the water, becoming completely inert. Superman held his punch, confused. What could this sudden deactivation mean? Deep in outer space, the same ship from 35 years ago was swiftly passing planets. Deep within its twisted interior, a strange green man would awaken from his mechanically induced slumber. An alert sounds and echoes throughout his chambers. Kryptonian encountered. And then, a directive. Locate. Attempt number 242 in progress. The pre-programmed alerts do not stop there. They sound off with increasing frequency as the routines and subroutines begin falling in a great domino effect. Unable to decipher probe coordinates, one says. Then, Kryptonian not found. Brainiac, his mind plugged in directly to the vast binary net of his ship, rests peacefully. His brainwaves, however, are humming with activity, recalibrating trajectory. His ship confirms as the giant silver skull plods off into the inky blackness of space and out of view. Meanwhile, in the Fortress of Solitude, Superman's cousin Supergirl was uncomfortable and would tell Clark that this thing isn't Brainiac. Superman began explaining that as an alien from the planet Kolu, Brainiac's telepathic and telekinetic mind is 1,000 times more powerful than theirs. He also never shows up the same way twice. Some bodies were organic, while others were robotic. And the molecular structure of this robot matched another Brainiac he defeated in the past. But Supergirl knew better. This isn't Brainiac. Like all the others, this was just one of his probes. Supergirl would clear her cousin's confusion by telling him that he's never faced the real Brainiac. Every version of the villain he's ever known was just his programming. No one's ever really seen him. You know about Brainiac? Clark asked in a bemused tone. But when he turned to look at Supergirl, he could see she was shaken. Unlike her cousin, Kara actually grew up on Krypton. And everyone on Krypton knew about Brainiac. Holding herself, she'd remember that he's what kept them from going out after dark. Shuddering, she began telling Superman what happened to Kandor, the city from before. Eventually, her fear was so overwhelming that her heat vision turned on unconsciously. 
Vividly remembering the tragedy that ripped out the heart of Krypton prior to its demise, she couldn't stop. Superman grabbed her as she recalled losing her best friend, Akvar. Holding his traumatized cousin in a fierce hug, Superman told her, It's not going to hurt you. Not anymore. In the past, Superman told Kara that Lex Luthor is everything bad about humanity, but Brainiac was everything bad about aliens. If Supergirl's rocket didn't malfunction and place her in suspended animation, she would have been able to look after Superman when he was just a baby instead of how things are now. She sometimes wished she didn't have any memories of Krypton. As she cried, she'd wonder if she'd be like Superman instead. That maybe she wouldn't miss it so much. Next, Clark visited his Earth parents and told them about Kara's story and the possibility that there might be thousands of actual Kryptonians being kept by Brainiac. Martha was very skeptical and worried about their son's plans, but his father was more reassuring. I'm long past worrying about the decisions you make, he told Clark. Your greatest power isn't being able to fly or see through walls. It's knowing what the right thing to do is. Jonathan then took his son to the barn and showed him all the memorabilia he'd saved from Clark's childhood. You be careful out there, Jonathan told him. And if there are people who need help, you do what you always do. Don't let anyone or anything get in your way. I won't, Clark responded. On his way out, Superman used his heat vision to inscribe a small message into a horseshoe for his father. It read, World's Greatest Dad. With that, Superman headed out on his intergalactic manhunt. He poured through the crystal recordings of Krypton's past to get a sense for what had happened with Kandor. But before he could get to the bottom of his suspicions, Superman's ship issued an alert. Coming into view was a full-scale Brainiac invasion, much like the one he'd unleashed on Kandor decades earlier. A city in the far reaches of the cosmos was being torn apart by Brainiac's robots. Its people were being slaughtered, and its monuments were crumbling. But after a blur of red and blue, the robot's head was crushed in Superman's clenched hands. Found you, he said as the death machines all turned toward him. Darting across the battlefield and tearing through the drones as he went, Superman grabbed one, telling it to take him to their leader. Take me to your leader. Almost on cue, Superman saw Brainiac's mothership floating above. Taking to the skies, Superman barreled toward the massive aircraft. But to repel him, a gigantic tentacle struck Superman from the sky and sent him careening to the ground. As he watched, a force cage went up around the city limits, trapping the inhabitants inside. Superman pummeled the field, but not even his super strength was enough to break it. He was bleeding. Seconds later, a brilliant flash of light blinded Superman as Brainiac's ship launched something stealthy out of its hull. When his eyes cleared, Superman saw that the city he had been defending was gone. As Superman couldn't believe his eyes, the missile zipped out into space and slipped into the center of the nearby sun. In seconds, there was a complete solar meltdown. The resulting supernova scorched, cracked, and melted the entire planet to mere space dust and rocks. Floating in the midst of all the rubble was Superman, helpless and unconscious, completely unaware of the giant skull-like ship that had set its eyes on him. From the command deck, Brainiac's emotionless face twitched into a satisfied grin. Kryptonian found. Number 2. Down to Earth Back on solid ground, Supergirl swung by the Daily Planet, causing quite a stir among the assembled employees. Not only did the Woman of Steel arrive unannounced to Metropolis's most read newspaper, Kara managed to immediately antagonize Catherine Grant, the new tabloid reporter. That's strange, Supergirl noticed as she talked with Catherine. What's strange? Miss Grant asked aggressively. My X-ray vision is picking up some weird plastics in your... But before Kara could get herself into real trouble, Lois quickly took charge and made a deft excuse as to her appearance before spiriting the young hero off to the roof to chat privately. What are you doing here, Kara? Lois asked, her voice sharp until she heard the worry in Kara's response. I've been looking everywhere and asking everyone, Lois. Where is my cousin? Meanwhile, Superman was bound and lying unconscious on Brainiac's operating table, where the interplanetary menace's robots were taking all manner of measurements, records, and samples from Clark's body. Until suddenly, Superman was shocked back to the land of the living, flexing his muscles and breaking free of his bonds. Superman wiped the floor with the rest of the bots surrounding him, still trying to get a grasp on what was happening. After pulling the intubator from his own throat, Supes looked up to see hundreds of cages, each containing their own prisoner, all of which had been subjected to the same fate Superman just escaped. As he stood and started roaming the chamber, one of the creatures in Brainiac's collection named Coco was released. Superman easily handled the primitive creature, understanding that it was not his true enemy. He made his way further into the bowels of the ship. As he did, he soon came across another twisted trophy room, one containing dozens of transparent containers. With his super hearing, Superman felt drawn to one of the bottles, and what he saw inside shocked him. It's here, 
Superman whispered to himself as he beheld it. Candor. But as he reached out, it was yanked away by a mechanical tendril into the rafters of the chamber. Turning around, Clark was finally face to face with the terrible Brainiac. For once, the genius warmonger unhooked himself from the ship's interface, slowly emerging from the almost egg-like system that kept his body in stasis. Not even Superman expected Brainiac to be so intimidating in person. At last, Kryptonian, you belong to me now. Brainiac bellowed as he reached out and grabbed Supes by the neck. No one belongs to you, Superman protested as he managed to kick himself free of Brainiac's clutches. But their fight was only just beginning. The two powerhouses hammered away at each other at the center of Brainiac's mothership. Trying to keep Brainiac on the back foot, Clark employed his heat vision to slice a sizable gash into Brainiac's cheek, sending the alien reeling. As they fought, though, the mean green genius's machines did Brainiac's dirty work for him, providing extra arms and weapons that Superman had to contend with. Soon, Superman was strung up by the ship, and Brainiac revealed to him the truth of his existence. I will be everything there has ever been, Kryptonian, the madman monologued. I will be evolved into perfection. As Clark struggled against Brainiac, millions of miles away, back on Earth, his parents could sense that something was wrong. Jonathan and Martha were bickering lovingly, as usual, until their conversation turned to their son. Something feels different, Martha told her husband, still concerned about Clark's plan of seeking out his enemy. We have to hope for the best, Jonathan told her calmly. We have to hold on to that. Our bird left the nest a long time ago, Mr. Kent said, pride gleaming in his eyes. Just picture him flying. But at that moment, a lone bluebird fell from the skies and landed with a sickening thump on the ground, leaving the Kents to decipher an ominous and threatening sign. Brainiac, as his ship's systems kept Superman helpless within the Grand Chambers, continued his malicious monologuing. I believe the city of Kandor to be the last vessel of Kryptonian data. Then, I learned of you. Brainiac chillingly watched Clark wrestle against his bonds as he explained his plans. Your existence outside of my bioshell, this ship, allows others to share in Kryptonian science and culture. I cannot allow my information to be shared, Brainiac assured the Man of Steel. My spinal station can process and sort the knowledge of over seven octodecillion beings. My Koluan brain, 70 times that. Knowledge is power. As Brainiac held Superman in his clutches, Clark's eyes began to betray the fear he felt boiling up inside. I have searched decades for you, but now you have come to me. Knowing the truth in his enemy's words, Clark couldn't contain himself any longer. Consider me a representative of the planet you terrorized. Clark rebuffed as he barely managed to pull free of the vessel security systems. But even though Supes managed to get a few hits in, one solid punch from Brainiac was enough to put the Man of Steel back on the floor. You have delivered yourself to me, Brainiac reiterated, and with every new planet, my power grows. Soon, I will be capable of stripping an entire galaxy of its intelligent life in a matter of hours. But nothing could have prepared Kal-El for when Brainiac said, Your downloads have provided me with vital knowledge. You are not the only one of your kind still out there. There is another. Then Brainiac turned to gaze directly into Superman's eyes. Your cousin will belong to me. Little did Clark know that as he and Brainiac battled in the command module of the ship, they'd also been speeding through the cosmos. Brainiac had commanded his ship to take them to the one place he knew he could do the most damage to the surviving Kryptonians, Earth. In the skies above Metropolis, as Superman was held in Brainiac's clutches, Lois and Supergirl looked up to see the terrifying visage of Brainiac's bioshell appear in the skies. No, it can't be, Kara whispered when it came into view. Not here, please not here but the damage had been done. Brainiac had come to Metropolis, his ship looming over the fearful city, and it wouldn't take long for the destruction to begin. Lois immediately held Kara in her arms to comfort the panicking Kryptonian. Kara, she said, Kara, honey, what is it? Kara shivered as she looked once more up to the sky. It's Brainiac, Lois. Cal must have found him. And now Brainiac is here. Meteorites started peppering Metropolis, sending civilians running for shelter as the buildings around them shuddered. On impact, the metal objects unwound to reveal the terrible Brainiac drones that had decimated Kandor so many decades earlier. As the Brainiac bot slowly advanced on Supergirl and Lois, Kara demanded to know what had been done to her cousin and where he was. Without an answer, she fired off her heat vision to no avail. Lois, Supergirl said, her voice like steel. Go. Lois protested, but Kara wouldn't have it. Please, go, she asked again as the bots marched ever closer. They attacked my world, Lois. They abducted the city of Kandor, and they killed hundreds to do it. I'm not running away. I want to, but I can't. Kara threw herself forwards towards the killer machines as Lois began running. 
Cal didn't, she yelled before thrusting her fist through the chest of the nearest drone. Neither will I. Meanwhile, Brainiac was handling the Man of Steel without mercy, and Superman was barely holding his own. I know what you're thinking, the madman taunted Clark. Brainiac downloaded Superman's memories and created a program to calculate his mental state in any situation. You are frightened. Frightened of what I will do to your cousin, and your adopted world, and its people. They will all live as you will, Kryptonian. In me. Struggling, Superman refused to let these things happen to his family or his home, a notion that perplexed Brainiac. Physically, Superman is Kryptonian, yet he considered himself human. Like himself, Superman is a combination of worlds. But although he's connected to every living being in his bioshell, Brainiac would never consider himself anything other than Kaluan. I would never betray my race as you have, Brainiac said. And with that, Superman had enough. He grabbed one of Brainiac's central tubes, connecting the alien's brain to a ship, and bit down hard. As the tube ripped, Brainiac howled in pain and confusion. As Clark looked down at the doubled-over form of his enemy, he said simply, Inflicting pain on others doesn't seem to bother you. It bothers me. Usually. Slamming his fist into Brainiac's gut, Superman sent the alien careening into his own hibernation chamber, shattering the pod beyond repair. With Brainiac out of the picture, Kal-El raced to find the lost city of Kandor, which he found by once again following the strange whispers echoed in a familiar language. As he neared the city, his brain was tapped by the inhabitants inside. Their whispers initially scared Clark as he thought he was listening to the ghost of his dead father. But soon they revealed themselves to be the voices of Zor-El and Allura, Supergirl's parents. Have you seen our daughter? They asked desperately as Clark looked on in shock and awe. Outside, their child was battling desperately against Brainiac's ground forces, but Superman knew nothing of that battle now. They had many questions. Kara thought you were both dead, Superman told them. But as Supes listened, his aunt and uncle described how Zor-El had managed to reverse engineer Brainiac's Force Dome technology after the abduction of Kandor. Zor-El and Allura used Brainiac's own invention to protect their city during the destruction of Krypton, but it wasn't enough. Brainiac returned to make sure that the rescued Kryptonian city was decimated, saving only those he deemed of intellectual distinction. Supergirl was sent away moments before Brainiac's impending invasion, and had always believed her parents died, without hope of ever seeing them again. But just at that moment, Brainiac's tentacles once again entrapped the last son of Krypton and bound him in place. Brainiac had used the precious time Clark spent listening to his uncle and aunt's tale to rejuvenate himself and regain total control over his ship. On the ground, even Lois had joined Kara's battle against the killer robots. But suddenly, a red anti-gravity beam encased Supergirl and began lifting her up towards Brainiac's inner sanctum. On board the ship, drills bore their way into his forehead as Superman screamed out in pain. And for the first time in over 200 years, Brainiac felt pleasure. All at once, a shield of impenetrable force descended around the city of Metropolis, cutting off families from one another and entrapping all those within the city limits. Meanwhile, the people begged for their missing hero. Brainiac always thought Superman's name was strange. After all, he's not a man at all. And Super, well, there wasn't anything all too super about him, unlike Brainiac. Brainiac was insulted by the fact that Superman truly believed he could outsmart him with such a small mind. As he kept Superman in the very status he'd previously placed himself in, Brainiac wondered how many worlds Superman's brain would be able to store before turning into sludge. As Metropolis began the dire process of being taken up into the annals of Brainiac's ship, a small missile shot from the skull-shaped vessel and plunged its way toward the sun. A package that promised to deliver a short and timely demise to the Earth and everyone on it. Just like Krypton, Brainiac promised as he stared into the rage-filled eyes of the Man of Steel. In Kansas, Jonathan and Martha watched helplessly from their farm as a streak of red light tore through the atmosphere, making its way toward the source of their sun's powers the sun itself. As Metropolis itself was shrink-wrapped for Brainiac's collection, Superman could only watch as his home city was abducted. Brainiac had believed that Superman was like him, but knew now that he was wrong. But Superman's super hearing was focused on one thing, the sound of Lois's voice emanating from the bottled city. Clark, if you can hear me, I don't know what's happening, she said. I don't know if this is the end, but if it is, if it is the end, no, please know how much I love. With that, Superman exploded from his chains. Part of the ship ruptured and exploded at the force with which Clark broke his bonds. He went to punch Brainiac, but his fist was caught. Stupid, Brainiac snarled. You are a simple brute, he mocked. But while gripping the open nodes on Brainiac's cranium, Superman responded. When I need to be. 
and ruptured Brainiac's nose by grabbing his forehead and forcing it down into a clean uppercut. He followed this up by blasting his heat vision directly into the Megalomaniac's eye sockets. With no time to lose, Superman grabbed both Metropolis and Kandor under his arms and sped off to free his cousin, vowing to come back and help the others soon. Supergirl was being prepped for examination when Superman quickly rushed into the chamber. Clark explained that the device Brainiac had sent toward the sun could not be allowed to reach its target. Kara, whatever is heading toward the sun, you need to stop it, Clark told her. I... I'm not fast enough, Supergirl protested. Yes, you are, Clark assured her. I can't do it, she said. Yes, you can, Clark mirrored once more. I'm scared, Kara admitted, her eyes dropping ever so slightly. It's okay to be scared, Superman told her, never once looking away. Kara looked shocked, but then her eyes were set with determination. She sped off through the hull of Brainiac's ship and towards the sun faster than she'd ever moved in her life. In Supergirl's absence, Brainiac once again approached Clark. The alien was enraged as he referred to his opponent as Earthman, but Clark was ready this time. He instantly froze Brainiac to the wall with his icy breath and bashed both of them through the hull of the ship and out into the open air. Brainiac fell for miles until he landed amidst the mud and dirt of Earth's surface. All at once, Brainiac's systems became distressed and overwhelmed by the alien landscape and microorganisms. But Superman didn't let up for a second. Clark slammed a boot into Brainiac's face as he landed, sending Brainiac's face plunging further into the muddy sludge beneath him. Welcome to Earth, Brainiac, Clark angrily taunted before flying off to restore Metropolis to its rightful place. But even in defeat, Brainiac would not be outdone. Only managing a whisper, Brainiac promised secretly, I know where your home truly is. As you take mine, I take yours. At his command, another missile shot from his sky barge, this time aimed directly at Smallville. With Brainiac finally subdued, Superman replaced Metropolis by breaking its protective bottle. But for once, the city's protector could not stay to revel in victory with its inhabitants. Flying at top speed, Clark barely managed to reach the Arctic Tundra before the containment unit on Kandor ruptured. The bottle crashed to the ground and spit out the full-sized Kryptonian city into the icy north. And as Kandor was freed, far across the solar system, Supergirl just barely managed to reach the Sun Killer missile, hurling the weapon back away from its target and basking in the glow of its explosion. What neither Kryptonian knew, as they each smiled in victory, was that a third threat was rocketing its way towards the Kent family farm, and no one would be there to stop it. While marveling at the newly freed city of Kandor and its noisy return, Superman failed to hear the desperate cries of his mother. But once the city had completely escaped, Clark would begin to hear her sorrowful voice, and in an instant, Superman rushed as quickly as he could to his childhood home, only to see it engulfed in flames. No words were spoken, but when he looked into Martha's eyes, Superman knew that he was too late. Brainiac had triumphed. In the aftermath of the explosion, his father had died of a sudden heart attack, and Clark's life would never be the same. Sometime later, a funeral would be held for Clark's late father, an emotional and guilt-laden event. Suddenly breaking into a maximum facility prison, Superman would tear through the space, housing a defenseless Brainiac and begin walking towards the alien with searing heat and hatred in his eyes. After cracking Brainiac across the face, Clark slammed him down into the reinforced pavement. And as Brainiac desperately struggled to keep his assailant back, Superman brutally laid into him, slowly and painfully beating him to death as Brainiac's blood took the place of his tears. But that's when Lois interrupted him. It wasn't real, but Superman knew he could change that at any moment. From there, Clark would return to his parents' barn while remembering all of the moments he'd shared with his father before breaking down while holding that horseshoe from before. For more Superman losses, check out our video on Batman's butler Alfred beating him in a fight.